Label 1. Introduction. Fish with human-like teeth, ants with incredibly painful bites, huge snakes, and even giant leeches – that's who inhabit the Amazon. Today, I'll tell you about the creepiest predators of this region. You'll definitely be glad that you're safe at home right now, not where these monsters live. Because at the end of the video, I'll show you an innocuous-looking fish capable of killing an adult. Enjoy watching. I'll start my story with the creepiest little fish. Have you ever heard of the payara? If not, maybe at least the vampire fish. That's another name for it in the world. Or the dog-tooth kerosin, the saber-tooth barracuda, or the wolf fish. This fish has many names. And when I first saw its photo, I couldn't believe my eyes. Why? Look at its fangs! It's like a mix of a fish and a saber-toothed tiger. I thought such a thing couldn't exist in nature, but how wrong I was. Dagger-like teeth grow from the lower jaw of the payara and are used to pierce through their prey. And they are so big that this fish even had to invent special notches for its fangs so its jaw could close properly. The payara is a true monster of the Amazon. It always has such a fierce look as if it's about to attack someone. But don't worry. Fortunately, payara is an ichthyophagous fish, meaning it only feeds on other fish. Anything that breathes through its gills ends up in its mouth. Even members of its own species. But that doesn't mean it can't bite you, so don't stick your fingers in its mouth. It's interesting that the vampire fish can move very quickly, like lightning, possesses brute strength and can leap out of the water to great heights. And that's why even piranhas fear this 40-pound monster. Moreover, some scientists believe that the payara is at the top of the food chain, meaning literally everyone is afraid of it and nobody hunts it. Well, of course, swallowing such a fang would be like a needle in the stomach. I agree, it's better not to risk it. By the way, about piranhas. They, of course, also inhabit the Amazon. And if you've ever watched the movie Piranha, you undoubtedly think that these fish are very dangerous, capable of tearing a person into tiny pieces in a matter of second. However, that's not entirely true. The red-bellied piranha rules the waters of the Amazon and surrounding areas. It eats anything that comes its way, well, or under its fin, its own kind, worms, crustaceans, and insects. Sometimes it encounters a human on its path. But it can't swallow him whole, of course, only inflict serious injuries. Local fishermen consider the piranha a professional hazard, and every other one has scars from its bites. So if you ever find yourself in the Amazon and hear dull clicking sounds coming from the depths, it's better to get out of the water. That's how piranhas send signals to each other. And don't even stand in shallow water, because that's where these small predators, no more than 10 inches long and weighing 4 pounds, prefer to hunt. And how else to hide from those 5-foot-long dog-tooth kerosens? Not all piranhas feed on meat and have sharp fangs. For example, the paco fish, a vegetarian with a set of human-like teeth. Well, or very similar to human teeth. And I'm not joking, just look at its teeth! Why did I call the paco a vegetarian? It's simple, because it mainly feeds on nuts, which it skillfully cracks with its unusual mouth. Surprising, isn't it? But that doesn't mean this fish can't bite someone. For example, it sometimes comes across unlucky crayfish. It mistakes them for nuts and cracks their shells, and then realizes it's only meat and swims away with disgust. And as for humans, if you ever see the paco's teeth, it will probably only use them to scare you, but unlikely for an attack. Nevertheless, there have been causes of paco attacking people. It's believed they hunt for male genitalia, as some parts of the male body can easily be mistaken for nuts. I think it's a silly myth, but quite amusing. And regardless of your gender, you should beware of the paco while swimming because they could easily bite you if they mistake you for their usual food. For example, in a private aquarium in Scotland, the fish almost bit off a finger of an unwary onlooker. So keep your distance even from a vegetarian piranha. Protect your fingers and, well, other parts of your body. Before making this video, I thought sharks only lived in seas and oceans, in salt water. Turns out, I was wrong. The bull shark, or river shark, is found almost everywhere, but particularly favors the warm waters of the Amazon. Leaving seas and oceans, this predator can travel up to 2,500 miles in fresh water. This ability is related to its physiology. The gills and rectal gland of bull sharks 
can retain and excrete salt. Interestingly, this species of river predators also prefers coastal waters no deeper than 100 feet, which makes them freshwater. And the largest sharks, up to 13 feet, are especially dangerous to humans. But don't worry too quickly. The main diet of bull sharks includes bony fish, turtles, marine and land mammals, crustaceans, echinoderms, and rays. And although there are known cases of attacks on humans, they are still very rare. The most famous one happened almost a century ago, in 1916, in New Jersey, when bull sharks killed four people and injured one over 12 days. These attacks were probably caused by a large number of bathing tourists, emitting aromatic smells and unpleasant sounds. Because to provoke a bull shark to attack a human, you really have to anger it. Next time you find yourself near a lagoon or river mouth, be careful, as these freshwater predators consider these places their usual habitat. Here's another creature, resembling a shark, but not actually one. The sawfish. To understand how it looks, imagine a shark with a long snout, saw-like nose, blade-shaped and sharp teeth, and you'll get an accurate picture. Some sawfish can reach lengths of 25 feet and weigh up to a ton. Like bull sharks, sawfish prefer brackish water in river estuaries, but sometimes venture into fresh water. Considering that the snout makes up a quarter of its entire body, sawfish use it as a weapon as well as means of defense against predators. Like a club, they can stun nearby fish with their nose and pin their prey to the bottom before starting to eat. Unfortunately, this same body part makes sawfish vulnerable to nets, so this representative of river fauna is now on the verge of extinction. Whoa! Look at this monster called the Arapaima! Seeing such a fish is a real test for the nervous system. It's just gigantic, up to 10 feet long, and weighing up to 200 pounds. Although some specimens can be even twice as large. And what's interesting is when you see such a monster, you can't help but imagine it eating people for breakfast. But no, the Arapaima is not a man-eater. It prefers fruits, seeds, small birds, and mollusks. The predator simply opens its mouth wide, creating a vacuum and sucking in anything that comes near its nose. And then it grinds the food with its teeth and bony tongue before sending it to its stomach. In the waters of the Amazon, the population of Arapaima is numerous and plays an important role in the lives of indigenous people, becoming a source of pride for local rural residents. And if you've decided to find the largest predator in this region, you don't need to look any further than the black caiman, which undoubtedly looks menacing. A huge reptile with dark black or gray scales, red eyes, just terrifying. I wouldn't want to meet one ever. This creepy monster hunts in a similarly creepy way. It ambushes its prey, a turtle, a bird, small mammals, near the water, then swiftly attacks holding the poor creature underwater until it drowns. Then the caiman starts its long-awaited feast, tearing huge chunks from the carcass with its powerful jaws and swallowing them whole. Be careful! Black caimans can also attack humans if they sense a threat, mainly if a person is near a nest where the eggs, future babies, are stored. If you ever saw this giant leech live, you'd probably think you ended up in a horror movie. However, this creature is not only real, but also inhabits the waters of the Amazon River. This species was first discovered in 2007, when it was removed from the nose of a little girl living in Peru. The doctor who performed the operation sent the find to his friend at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. However, the scientist couldn't immediately determine which family the leech belonged to. It took over two years of research to determine that it belongs to the family of leeches that feed on the mucous membranes of the upper respiratory tract of mammals. The new species was named the Royal Leech, or Tyrannobdala rex, scientifically. It got its name thanks to its enormous size, 3 inches, yes, that's huge for a leech, and also thanks to its teeth, which are used to attach to victims' skin, including even those delicate places that are not customary to talk about openly in society. Incredible creature. By the way, a monument to the royal leech was recently erected in the Amazon. Unexpected, isn't it? I think it's directly related to the medical properties of the saliva it secretes. The Amazon, or the Amazon rainforest, refers not only to the river, but also to the natural region in South America, 
So apart from various aquatic creatures, there are also insects, mammals and birds. In the tropical forests of the Amazon, there lives such an unusual representative of the insect family, distinguished from other relatives by powerful pincers near the mouth. This is the bullet ant, and it rightfully earned its name. If you ever encounter this seemingly harmless creature, you won't escape severe pain lasting for about a day. Its bite, accompanied by powerful venom and sting, is compared to the impact of a rubber bullet. It's so painful! I've never been shot at, but I'm sure that's how it is. And of course no one will willingly approach this ant. That's what I thought until I learned about a horrific ritual. Some Brazilian tribes have a strange ritual of initiation for boys into adulthood. They weave something like gloves from large leaves, and then they insert ants on a string into them with their stingers inward. And imagine, the teenage boy has to put his hands into these gloves and hold them there for a whole 10 minutes. And if he can't, he's not mature. The least harm from this completely inhumane ritual is numbness of the hands for several days and loss of sensitivity. The worst outcome is death, apparently from shock. Well, in the Amazon, that's the way it is. If you can't pass the ritual, you can't be part of the tribe. So the higher powers have ordained. Now, the next creature that always comes to mind when I think about the Amazon is the green anaconda. I used to think that movies exaggerated the danger of the snake, but believe me, they don't. Despite lacking venom, it's one of the deadliest snakes in the world. That's because green anacondas can grow to such sizes that it will make your blood run cold, up to 30 feet in length and weighing up to 550 pounds. The diameter is also impressive, almost 11 inches. Just giants. What can I say? It seems to feed such a massive body, you'd need a feast of a couple of people. Although in movies, they slightly exaggerate its appetite for humans. But overall, the anaconda doesn't care what it eats. Though typically, it prefers more classic dishes. Birds, deer, jaguars, turtles, or even capybaras. Quite a gourmet. And the way the snake sets up its meals is a whole other story. The anaconda coils around its prey and suffocates it, then swallows it whole, crawling over the victim like a cover. Remember that picture from the little prince? I think that's the snake that ate the elephant. But imagine, there are predators capable of eating even anacondas, and they inhabit the Amazon. Brazilian otters, the largest freshwater representatives of this family. Their sizes are impressive. Adult males can reach 6 feet in length from head to tail. The diet of Brazilian otters primarily includes fish and crabs, which they hunt in groups of 3 to 8 individuals. So, in a day, they can consume up to 9 pounds of seafood. And that's not all. Despite their cute appearance, these animals are far from harmless. There have been cases where a group of Brazilian otters attacked and killed adult anacondas, as well as successfully dealt with caimans. Once, observers documented a group of Brazilian otters killing and eating a 5-foot caiman in just 45 minutes. Incredible! So, these seemingly harmless animals are some of the strongest predators in the Amazon rainforest, earning them the unofficial nickname River Wolves. The Amazon is teeming not only with giants, the small creatures inhabiting it are no less horrifying, at least if you believe the stories about them. Candiru catfish. These are tiny parasitic freshwater fish that became famous for their unpleasant hobby. They crawl into the genitals of those who carelessly decide to urinate directly in the river. Once in the urinary tract, Candiru fish firmly lodge there, thanks to the spikes growing on their backs. And although there are few documented cases, and there are constant disputes about whether they occurred at all, there is at least one officially confirmed case when surgery was simply necessary to remove the candiru from a man's urethra. The fish almost reached the young man's scrotum, trying to hide deeper, causing him incredible pain. But typically, candiru fish prefer to parasitize on fish, attaching to the gills of larger specimens with the spikes on their backs and feeding on their blood. The Amazon and its inhabitants are truly impressive. I don't understand those daredevils who embark on unusual journeys through the jungle. It's very dangerous. What do you think about this? Leave your comment below the video. Well, that's all for me. Thanks for watching.